But so I love everything dinosaurs and I love everything giant gorilla. <laughs>
In 1980, Ola Farwell sold the park to Ken Childs after he decided he was too old to run the park. Farwell passed away in 1988. Since Childs was the new owner of the park, he and his wife set out to liven up the park and were friends with B-movie actor John Agar. So, with the recent release of the 1976 King Kong film, Ken Childs saw it as an opportunity to cash in by creating a 40-foot tall King Kong statue and renamed the park John Agar's Land of Kong. My name is Turner, Sammy Turner, Dr. Sammy Turner. I'm a, a local physician here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I grew up in the Northwest Arkansas area. The dinosaur world, that takes me way back and I can't quite remember, but it would have been when I was in um, high school or junior high. As a Cub Scout, I think we went, as Boy Scouts, we went there. Um, you know, I guess, guess lots of people from around the area went. Um, my sister and brother, we went. And then every now and then, my dad would call it, we would just go loafing and go driving around and he was kind of cheap though but uh we might go over there and pull up the gate and not go in or we went in but we never got a souvenir out of the souvenir shop i remember always wanted one the king kong started construction right away in 1980 and was completed in 1984. the massive gorilla featured red blinking eyes and a moving mouth but these broke about six months later it was originally intended to have moving arms to beat on the gorilla's chest like it did in the movie but this was too advanced at the time so the couple put the budget toward refurbishing the older dinosaurs and made them look like a cartoon rather than realistic colors. It was this, this huge King Kong and you, you'd see the spider and there was like a gate. There was a little lake there and a trail. So it was kind of a little nature walk. It's pretty cool. After the King Kong statue was finished, not much changed about Dinosaur World. People came and went throughout the late 1980s and 1990s, but in 2005, Dinosaur World closed its doors for good. This was due to a lack of revenue and maintenance to the statues. The park fell into disarray and began to rot over the years. In 2011, Dinosaur World was a victim of arson as the main building was burned down as well as the entrance sign, which caused a barbed wire fence to be built around the property to prevent any future destruction. Dinosaur World was then purchased by Spider Creek Resorts in 2015 with plans for a total restoration, but this never happened. This leads us to the present day. The park has continued to fall apart without a care from the new owners. I had contacted the new owners of the park, but they declined my request for entry to acquire material. This caused me to rely mostly on older videos and photos and whatever I could see from the outside. There are nearly 30 different no trespassing signs, which is a shame as it keeps people from discovering this magical place. My name is Blaine Turner. Uh, I'm originally from Fayetteville, Arkansas, but I am a third year film student at Cal State Long Beach. Really, I think it's disgraceful that the new owners won't open this place up to the public. They won't do anything about it, fix up the dinosaurs. Because, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but I know from my personal experience, I mean, big dinosaurs, big giant gorillas and everything, that monsters, you know, Th these things are key to my personality, at least, I think. I, I mean, they're very important in my development as a child, you know. Um, Godzilla movies, again, King Kong, it's like my most favorite movie in the entire world. Um, kids, they need to see these things, you know. I, we need to get the kids out there and see these beautiful dinosaurs, these works of art, you know. It's, it's a shame they're just going to waste. To me, it's a good memory of the way this part of Arkansas was at that time, you know. In the 70s, there were just lots of these goofy, you know, places like that, like the Civil War Cave in Bentonville, or a lot of these little places you could stop where they had Arkansas crystals or rocks, you know, and, and it's just sad to me that a lot of that's gone now. When I was a little kid, it was, we asked to go, we loved it. It was like, and it was like, you know, our Disneyland, which was close to our town in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. And uh, when you walked in there, you just felt like you were going to go look at real dinosaurs when you were little. Although the park has grown up and not cared for now, you can see the amount of craftsmanship and care that went into these amazing sculptures back in the day. At least the park will live on in the form of film as it was shown in the 1969 It's Alive, directed by Larry Buchanan.
and right before the park had closed, it was also featured in the 2005 film Elizabeth Town, which featured the Tyrannosaurus Rex from the park on the front cover. Dinosaur World was an attraction that amazed young kids with the large dinosaur sculptures combined with beautiful scenery. The park had a great beginning, but over time was forgotten. And I hope one day we will see it open its doors once more.